Hi everyone and welcome back. I'm so excited to be here with you today to do another Valentine's Day card or really an any day card. I'm going to be using a mixture of all of these colors and if you don't have any of these colors, you at least know what they look like to be able to pick a color out of your palette that somewhat matches or to be able to make a color out of your palette. So I like to do this little swatch for that reason. Because a lot of times when I watch tutorials, it's the same thing. I don't have the colors, and so being able to see what they look like, I can kind of reference my own palette to figure out what can work. Then the other fun trick that we're going to work on today is doing a transfer without a light box, without transfer paper or tracing paper. Okay guys, so here I've created a PDF for you, which is linked in the description box below, and we're going to use our pencil to cover over the letters and then trace it onto our watercolor pencil. But this is tricky because it's, well, anything but really letters. If I were to put the graphite on this side, flip it over to trace it, it's going to be inverted backward. So we are going to put our graphite pencil down on this side, making sure to really get the lines because that's what we're gonna do is just trace the lines of the letters. So we just want to make sure and get all of the lines of the letters in a pretty deep, I'd say this is a really good um, pressure and darkness and color. And this is a very easy way to do transfers, tracings. If you don't have a light box, if you don't have tracing paper, this is pretty much a super simple go-to. Okay, so all of our lines are traced and dark. Now we are going to, well, isn't that funny? Look at that. Can y'all see that? Oh, it transferred it for me. So, wow, that's interesting. Okay. So now I'm going to flip it. I have my five by seven here. I think this is my Stonehenge uh, cold press and I'm going to lay it down on my sheet and I'm just going to hold it and trace it. All right, we ready for the reveal? <sighs> it looks pretty good. It's very light, but that's good because now I don't really even have to go over with my eraser. One of the things that I've been really into lately is creating this really pretty wash in the background because what I noticed when I did this the first time was that it was all white in the middle where I didn't you know, put leaves or flowers and so it just kind of made it, you know, a little flat. And by then I had already done all of the work and I didn't want to splatter because I didn't want any of that to get overlooked. So, and I really like splatter actually when it's wet and it kind of bleeds and makes these really pretty bubbles, bleeds. So what I'm going to do is just kind of use these pinks that I had been practicing on as like a light, just kind of a light wash in there. I'm gonna do the darker one and the lighter one. And I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna take some water and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna play. Just kind of how I usually do, you know, cause I like when it doesn't get all the way in. When the paint just kind of skips over. This is a little dark for me over here. So I'm just gonna kind of lift and dab. And as I lift, I'm just gonna put that paint on my Paper towel. See here again, it created that real pretty scritchy scratchy. So I think what I'm gonna do is just take my paper towel. I'm just gonna kind of lift up. So I just want a little nod. Okay, I think that's that's a nice pretty shade. Just kind of creates a little bit of a background, a little different. Do I want to do some splatter? Oh, I just think I can't help it. I'm gonna try it with a really light version of this darker. All right, I am gonna stop there and see how that dries. All right, guys, so 
we are dry. We're now going to use basically our outline as just our guide as to where to stay in the lines for our flowers and our leaves. So now we are just going to, with a size three brush, this one has a really good um, tip. And so it allows me to move really nicely with the details with the roses and the buds. And so I have here a mixture of shell pink and some quadacridone magenta, some violet, and just making a soft pink here. And then this one is the mainly the quadacridone magenta, and it's, this one is the darker pink. So I wanted to have the contrast of the two um, for the different roses. And then for the green, you can just mix up any of the greens that you like. But for me, it's easy to start you know, kind of at the top. So I'm just going to do with my C curves, do my roses and these, it's really just about the blank space in the middle with these roses. So just going to make a dark center. You're going to take some water, dab it off a little, and then you're going to come in where there is a lot of that color and you're just going to continue with the C curves. Add some more water, dilute it some more as you get further out. And really just have fun with this because no two are going to look alike. They're, everyone is going to be darker, lighter. It's just, it's just fun to just kind of play around. I took some quadacridone magenta straight from the pan, dabbed it in the middle to give us some more dimension for the darkness of it all. And then we're just going to keep on. I'm going to alternate the light and the dark pinks. You know blending more color as we go and it, it can change which is great too so I'm also going to be doing some buds so with the buds I do three lines and one kind of starts with like a pointy tip and kind of winds down and around the other one also winds down and around and then I, and then I put one in the middle then I wet my brush and kind of come in and make, you know, that empty space there. Blend it in, but still leaving some of that empty space. And then I come in with my green and I put a little bit at the bottom to let it bleed. And then I kind of come out a little as well, just to, you know, give some semblance of leaves and greenery. Can also come down the central line like that. And so there we go. And if you wanted to even also put a little bit of darker pink down there, that's fine too. You know, it's just, this is a fun practice in doing our roses and our leaves and also composition. So just have fun with it and enjoy. All right, so now I'm gonna do a lighter pink rose. And I think I'm going to do this one just kind of in the middle, but still kind of close up. And again, we're just going to make our three, we'll just do that, three C curves in the middle, clean off our brush, damp it a little bit. And then we're going to continue on with the C curves. I like to come in from that color that I loaded up in the middle take that color and then make my C curves using that color and just kind of work it around. As you get further out, the water is more and more important because it lightens those petals. So that's beautiful. And then I'm just gonna put in a little bit more color just kind of in the middle. Oh, I'm loving that. And if you didn't want to wait to do your leaves you can have them blend we're going to be adding a lot of leaves anyway to just kind of fill in the empty space so if you wanted to do it while your roses were still wet then that would be a great way to just kind of blend everything together i also like to do different kind of leaves you know rose leaves do have kind of a little edge to them so you can stick with whatever kind of leaf, change it up. All 
right, so we're just gonna keep alternating our roses with our buds, with our leaves, making them kind of, you know, big and substantial. So I think here in this corner, I'm going to do two buds. So again, I just kind of make a little S curve there, bring it around for the U shape. And then I just do another little curve in the, in the middle, just to kind of signify those leaves that will begin to unfurl. And then I take my wet brush and blend it together. And it's nice to take a little bit of green to blend into the bud as well. And then I'm going to do another one in the darker color the same way. Let's see here with our S curve there and then kind of make our U shape with a little tail in the middle. Kind of blend it a little bit, a little bit better, leaving that white space though. And take a little bit of green on the edges to kind of blend it out. And then here are our two buds together and then we can continue with our greenery. See that one went, I think went out a little bit of, of line, but that's okay. We'll, that'll add to the beauty of it. And we can kind of fill this in here, maybe doing some different, you know, also putting in a little different green as well. So those are gorgeous. Okay, and I think I'm gonna go into with my dark red. And also a fun thing that you can do is kind of ones that have come off the edge. So I'll show you that here. We'll do our C curves with our brush and then here's our line right here. So we are just going to be cognizant of that and most of the rows will just wind up being here in the front. Again, just taking a little bit of that quadacridone magenta from the pan and boldening it up in the middle. All right, and then while everything is still wet, if we wanted to add some leaves, we certainly could. Okay, so I think from here, let's add a few more leaves. And it's interesting, because you think, oh my gosh, I can't just put a leaf, you know, out of nowhere, you know, that's not attached to anything, but it really, it's really pretty that way. So we can add just a couple of leaves here that. I'm going to take my lighter pink and I'm going to do, I think right here I'm just going to do a little half one as well. Lovely. And then I'm just going to create some more leaves kind of down the way here. There we go. And then this is what we do. We just keep, you know, moving along with this pattern. Just doing some really pretty roses and really just practicing my my rose technique, you know. I mean that that's what that's the only way I'm going to get better at making florals and roses is by practicing, so. That one's pretty, and then I am, I like the bleed, so I'm just gonna, you know, make sure that I put some real pretty stems, or uh, excuse me, leaves with all of my roses. And I'm just gonna keep varying the position and maybe even the intensity. When you do your rose petals, it's a lot like your leaves. You put some pressure down and you kind of, as you curve, you lift up. 
but you're always making those C curves and they can be different kind of C curves. You know, they can kind of tail off like that. They can be very traditional C curves. You know, it, it's really, that's, there's no rose that's going to look the same. And there's definitely a rose out there that is going to look just like yours. Okay, this one's dried a little, maybe not. I'm gonna do some leaves. And just pick up that color as you go around, letting the color do the work for you, letting the water and the color do the work for you. And then you can come in, if it didn't bleed enough for you, come in and add add some more color into those petals something like that beautiful I think I'm gonna start with the E kind of in these sections because I feel like these are a little harder to maneuver because they're thinner in all the directions So I'm just making sure to use up all the space on this part of the E. There we go. Okay, I think here I'm gonna do one kind of off, off the edge. And then as you get further out, you kind of take, you're taking the paint from each layer of these roses. So it gets, should get lighter as it goes out. And I love that, it's so full and pretty. I need a little something here. I guess I'll do a set of leaves. There we go, I'll do one here. Now we're just kind of, you know, seeing where we need things, you know, using placement. All right, excellent. So now what we're gonna do to kind of define this a little bit is we're going to use a pretty metallic pink. You can use any color. If you wanted to stick with the colors that you were using for the roses and the flowers, that would be great too. Or you can use a fine liner, anything that you want. But this I thought gave good definition while not overtaking. So like I said earlier, this is gonna be a very loose line work. So we're not even going to worry about straight lines. We're just gonna kind of keep it really loose, broken, and we're gonna go over it again as well, just to create another layer, another kind of frame to it. I'm gonna start with my heart here. It's almost like a vine, and you can you could do that too, you know, create a green, you know, that would really be pretty. And just kind of very, you know, delicately go over everything and make some, make some pretty tendrils that kind of come out and over. So right now I'm just kind of looking and seeing where I can see my, my pencil mark. And then I'm, if I can't see it, I'm just kind of leaving it, you know. And then I can come back in and fix it up later and kind of decide where I want the edges and the lines to be. Oh, that looks so pretty, I love it. So then I just come back in again and I just kind of make it, you know, even more offbeat, even more out of the lines. Maybe try and use a little bit more water than I did before. I'm just playing, you know, really just kind of experimenting with what looks good. 
thick lines, thin lines. Beautiful. And then I might take some of this darker pink. Maybe just kind of draw some lines just to add some metallic. accents in here. You can keep it real faint, real dainty. You can put it in the leaves, add it into the flowers. Wherever there's room for it, you know, where you kind of need some filler. All right, everyone. So I hope you enjoyed this quick and easy tutorial on roses and buds and leaves and creating a beautiful Valentine card for your Valentine. And don't forget that the link to this uh, traceable is in the description box. And there we have it, a beautiful Valentine Day card with an easy stencil that you can just put it on your paper and get to work and don't even worry about anything but practicing your roses and your leaves and your placement and enjoy creating something for someone else. Thank you for joining me today and until next time, bye. Have a great day.